Brighton are Champions League winners. Hello everybody, how's it going? Steve Byrne here, aka Pop and Fresh 87. That's what I go by on Xbox and Twitch, and you are joining us for the penultimate episode of the Into the Future series. And in this particular episode, we are in the year 2200. If you have been enjoying this kind of content, then please do feel free to subscribe, like the video, and comment anything that you'd like to in the video below. So, with that being said, let's go and take a look at England. Right, so here we are, we're in England. In the last episode, we left that with Manchester United defeating Tottenham to become the champions of the Premier League. So, uh, as we can see here, Manchester United haven't won it quite as much as, you know, they would like to, but uh, let's see what the 20 years ahead hold for them. So, it goes to Arsenal, and then Tottenham twice, then Manchester United twice, followed by Arsenal, Manchester United, Arsenal. Manchester United win a lot now. That's 10 years gone. Then Tottenham, Manchester United, Liverpool, Manchester United and Liverpool twice, and then Man United, Liverpool twice, and then Man United. So, that last decade has been pretty much dominated by Man United and Liverpool, with the little addition of Tottenham winning it as well. Uh, if we look at the runners-up, we can see that Aston Villa was second in the 92-93 season, which is quite impressive. And we've even got Brighton finishing third. Uh, Watford again. Obviously, Watford had that spell of dominance, as we can remember of one of the previous episodes. Um, again, Villa finishing third. Derby, they've fallen off the pace of it a little bit because they were consistently winning in the 60s. So they've fallen off the pace a little bit. But uh, mainly, the last 20 years... It's all been Manchester United and Liverpool, really. What about the FA Cup? Let's see who's winning that. Arsenal were the winners of the last FA Cup in the 80s season. So uh, let's see if they can add more to their illustrious FA Cup collection. So they beat Tottenham that year. And then next year, United beat Villa. Then it goes on to be Derby, Tottenham, Brighton. And then Chelsea, Manchester United have been in two finals in a row and lost both. Chelsea yet beat Arsenal, then Liverpool beat Derby, Arsenal beat Liverpool, Tottenham won it again by beating Derby, Brighton beat Port Vale. Wow, imagine that as a final. Uh, Palace then beat Villa, Arsenal then beat Tottenham in another North London Derby final, and then Palace beat Watford, and then Arsenal two more times beating Liverpool and Man City, and Man City beat Pompey, Man United beat Brighton, Sheffield Wednesday beat Watford, and then Liverpool, Man United and Liverpool beating... Tottenham, Arsenal and Man City respectively in that order. So as we can see here again, this one's been a real mixed bag really. Um, obviously we can see Manchester United won it a couple of times, Arsenal won it a handful of times, uh, Tottenham won it a couple of times and uh, yeah, even Brighton have won it a couple of times. So at the moment there's no real dominant team you would say in the FA Cup. So it's yeah, a mixed bag really, which is quite good I think. What about the Carabao Cup? Who's winning this one? In the last episode, Tottenham had won it three years in a row, beating Middlesbrough, West Brom and United. So, it looks like Tottenham have a upper hand in the Carabao Cup to see if they can continue their form and win anything within the next 20 years. So, as we progress, we can see Watford were the next champions, beating West Brom. Derby then went on to beat United. Then, Man U beat Brighton. Then, Forest beat United. So, Man United have been involved in a fair few finals here. Uh, Palace went on to beat United. There we go. And then, Tottenham get another Carabao Cup by beating Palace. Nottingham Forest win it again, beating Watford. And then we see United beat Liverpool. Derby beat Watford. And then Liverpool run it twice by beating Arsenal and United. Then Tottenham get to another final, but Villa win it. And then Tottenham win it the next year by beating Derby. Uh, Liverpool go on to defeat Brighton. Manchester United have won it three times in the next five, six years. No, five years. Uh, Man City and Liverpool and then currently the champions are Chelsea so that's all in England let's go and see how La La Liga is doing Celta Vigo had asserted some dominance in La Liga in the 70s roughly because they won it four times from 74-75 and Valencia also won it twice and Getafe had won it in the 73-74 season so those three teams aren't really teams you expect to be seen winning the La Liga. Let's see if they can uh, continue their form and hopefully get some more titles under their belts. So, as we go up, straight away we can see Barcelona 
have started to take control again. Look, six in a row before Atletico Madrid managed to get two in a row. Then Madrid break it up again. And then Valencia actually get a win. That's nice. Barcelona. And then Alaves in 92-93. Went two years in a row. Wow. And then Real Madrid twice. Barcelona three times. And then Valencia are the current champions at the moment. But uh, we can see here, you know, Vigo had finished second a few times. Getafe, Valencia, Real Sociedad. And then Getafe again. But Alaves just out of the blue won it two years on the trot. I mean, they did become runners-up in the 1991 season, two years before they won the trophy. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. They just popped out of nowhere and grabbed themselves a few titles. Fair play, Alves. Fair play. All righty then, what about Italy? Who's winning that? In the last episode, it had been dominated by Juventus, pretty much. I mean, Inter had won a few here and there, but, yeah, look, you can just see Juventus all over the place, and Roma got one. So is that the case? Are Juventus still the dominant force? Let's have a look. So slowly scrolling up, we can see it. They had the title four years on trot before Inter bumped in and got themselves a title. Then they win it three more times with Inter breaking the gap. Another three for Juventus and then Inter managed to do back-to-back. -back. And then Juventus three times, Inter Milan three times and then current champions or Juventus, and even in the runners-up, it's mainly Inter Milan or Juventus. There's a couple of exceptions, Udinese, Milan, and uh, Roma. So it's been very predictable in Italy right now. And the third place is Cagliari, nice little third-place finish for them. Um, obviously Udinese, and even Chievo managed to get themselves a respectable third-place finish, defeating the likes of you know AC Milan, Roma, teams like that to a third place so that is how Italy looks at the moment so there's not a lot of change it's Inter Milan and Juventus is now let's head over to the Bundesliga let's see if Bayern Munich are still dominating as expected we left the last episode with Bayern Munich pretty much winning it all the time you know there is a couple of exceptions Hamburger Dortmund and Leipzig but uh yeah it's pretty much Bayern Munich's to lose so let's have a look as we progress so as I slowly scroll up we can see Bayern Munich have won it however many times that is a lot before FC Cologne managed to get themselves a Bundesliga title and then a year later Leipzig won before eventually Bayern Munich claimed back their title and then FC Cologne weren't having any of it they was like nope we're having the title back and then Bayern Munich two more times Leipzig Bayern Munich her for Berlin and then Bayern Munich twice. So, in the last 10 years, Bayern Munich have found it trickier to dominate. Obviously, they still win a lot of titles, but you know, with the inclusion of Leipzig, FC Cologne, and Her for Berlin, things are a bit more tricky for them at the moment, which is good because you don't want to see a team just dominating, let's be honest. And uh, in second place finishes, you know, it's quite a mixed bag, really. Borussia Mönchengladbach, Schalke. Uh, obviously Bayern, Stuttgart, Cologne, Augsburg, Stuttgart, Hamburger, Leipzig, yeah. And uh, similar sort of teams in the third place, really. Another one of Freiburg. But uh, yeah, it's good to see that Bayern Munich aren't dominating purely. You know, there are other champions as well. And the same can be said about Paris, because they have been absolutely running away with the French League. Let's see if that's still the case. Even if we just look here, look, look at that. Paris all the way up until the 80 season. And I'm going to slowly just scroll up and see if that's still the case. So, as I slowly move my mouse wheel, I'm not even going to look at the screen, I'm just looking at the camera. I bet it's not changing. <laughs> and it's really not. <laughs> look at that. They'd won the title every single year in that 20 year window of this episode. I mean, I feel sorry for the French football fans. I mean, if you're a Paris fan, great. But if you're anybody else, you'd be so disappointed the way that's going. Marseille, Lyon, Nice, Bordeaux, even VA, FC, Saint-Étienne, Guincamp are getting a few second-place finishes. And it's the same candidates finishing third. But we haven't seen Paris in the runners-up or third-place column for such a long, long time. 
it's now time to check out the Champions League winners. So we left the last episode with Barcelona beating Paris, which I can imagine a lot of fans would probably cheered for, the way Paris are just dominating French football, especially the French fans at least. But uh, we can see Paris have had a bit of dominance in the Champions League here, here, here and here. But uh, hopefully, for the sake of football, hopefully they're not winning every year in the Champions League. Let's have a look. So, straight away, Tottenham managed to get two in a row by beating Juventus and beating Arsenal in the North London Champions League final. Imagine that. Then Arsenal lose again against Barcelona in 82-83. And then Paris win it twice by defeating Manchester United and FC Cologne. Then it comes back to England where they Manchester United defeat Derby. And then we've got Paris twice in a row once more, it, defeating Inter Milan and Porto. Then it goes to Turkey. Galatasaray have beaten Juventus and then Bayern Munich and Manchester United defeat Paris in two two finals in a row and then Manchester United reclaim their Champions League title by beating Paris once more so Paris how many finals are they getting to seriously and then Inter Milan defeat Stuttgart good to see Stuttgart get into the final and then Bayern Munich defeat Inter uh, Juventus defeat Inter and <laughs> Manchester United defeat Inter poor Inter Milan and Paris then go and grab themselves another Champions League title. It had been a fair while. They beat Real Sociedad. And then Brighton. Brighton, the Champions League winners. Brighton. Beat Juventus. And then Inter. Beat Juventus. And then Paris beat Inter. Wow, that was pretty cool, actually. Good, good to see. Nothing against Paris, but it's good to see that they didn't dominate the Champions League like that they would in... It France, but it's a mixed bag. And Brighton, though, that's definitely the highlight of this episode. Brighton are Champions League winners. Wow. Okay, so that's the Champions League. What about the Europa League? The Europa League ended in the last episode with Porto defeating LASK. So I'm going to scroll up, check out the next 20 years, and see if there's any new teams on the horizon that are winning the Europa League. So as we scroll up, Watford have got themselves another European title. They beat Mönchengladbach. And then Mönchengladbach managed to beat Porto. And then Manchester United defeated Mönchengladbach. So that's three years in a row for Mönchengladbach. And Odd defeated Verhova FC. Pretty cool final, that is. Brighton are also Europa League champions. They beat IFK Norkoping. Then Bayern Munich defeated Juventus. Kievo defeated St. Poulton. Atletico Madrid then went on to defeat Juventus. And we can see here Barcelona defeated Watford. Watford, another European title, beat Liverpool. And then Arsenal beat Varense for us. Slavia Prague beat Getafe. So Getafe are still in Europe. And then FC Norgeland beat Manchester United. Alumni... Oh, wow. <laughs> Aluminij, I hope I'm saying that right, <laughs> defeated Red Bull Leipzig in 93-94. FC Nordschaland defeated Dynamo. And then we've got St. Gallen beating Liverpool. Dynamo Brest defeating Slavia Prague. So that's another final that they've achieved. Borussia Mönchengladbach beat FC Botasani. And then Porto defeated Bromby. And then finally Bayern Munich defeated Brighton. Who got themselves another European final. Wow, that's pretty cool, those teams. Especially, look, this period here between 92 to 96. Even, I'd say 91 to 96. 97, probably. So it's pretty impressive that, you know, we what we consider lesser teams are winning major European tournaments. Nice. But what about the World Cup? Who's been winning that? The last World Cup winner in 2178 in the last episode was Germany. They beat France... In Brazil so we can see in the next World Cup France then beat Spain in Australia then Spain managed to get themselves another World Cup I mean look even from here look how many World Cups they've been winning they beat Croatia in Spain then we had Germany defeating England <laughs> what a final that would have been in the USA and then Italy defeated Spain in 94 in Japan then we have the uh, current holders which is Portugal they defeated France in Italy. Now we're going to check out the European Football Championships. 
We left episode eight with Portugal, defeating France in France. And then uh, as we progress, we'll see who the new champions are in the last 20 years. So 84, Spain defeated Belarus in Ukraine, Poland. Belarus got to the European Football Championship final. Wow. Then 88, we see Germany defeat England once more in Portugal. Then in 92, France beat Italy in Switzerland, Austria. Then Spain go on to defeat Italy in England. And uh, that's where it ends, really, because we're in 12th of June. So currently, that tournament is still being played. But we will have a look at how it's going. Let's have a quick look. On second thoughts, I don't think we can. <laughs> because the first fixture is the 13th of June and we're in the 12th of June. So sadly, we won't know who won this tournament until the next episode. <laughs> But what we like to do next is to check out the three most expensive players in world football. So the world's most expensive player, well joint, joint top, is a player who plays for Brighton, Xabier Fernandez. He's a 25-year-old Spaniard who's valued at 99 million. Let's have a look. So as we can see here, he's predominantly a striker according to his positions. And uh, obviously that's just a breakdown summary of his things. There's a few unfiltered numbers, but there's a lot of high green numbers we can see he's only 25 he's got eight caps with two goals and we just look at the graph that gives you a good idea of his uh strengths and weaknesses so let's have a look at his history has he been at brighton forever so he starts his career actually at raul sociedad and then arsenal bring him in for 725k before loaning him to millwall and celtic and then oh my god brighton paid 200 and 42 million to bring in Xavier Fernandez from Arsenal. Wow, that's got to be a world record, isn't it? Surely. Woo. Um, as this is a joint top, I'll also include this guy. This is Ahmad Nasser. He plays for Manchester United. He is a 26-year-old German, also valued at 99 million. So if we have a look at this guy, again, just looking at the graph, we can see overall his weaknesses and his strengths and uh, you know he's got uh, some high numbers here 20 off the ball his agility is nearly 18 anticipation could be 20 between 18 and 20 and uh, he plays mainly attacking midfield and he's got 84 caps with 51 goals that's a good turnaround for Ahmad Nasser but uh, has he been Manchester United through and through let's have a quick look so uh, Nasser started his career at Hertha Berlin before Porto paid 30.5 million and then he spent four years there before Brighton sp spending the cash again. Paid £117 million. He stayed at Brighton for two years. And then Manchester United spent £187 million. So in second place, because the previous two were joint top, we have another Manchester United. He is a 28-year-old Spaniard and his name is Philippe Urenda. This guy is valued at £87 million. Again, a player with a bunch of filtered stats. So it's hard to break down his proper strengths, but... Just looking here, look, 18, 20, 19 to 20, 18 to 20, 20, 19, 16, 20, 18 to 19. He's got class, obviously. So, like we said, he's a Spaniard. He's got 83 caps and four goals for his country. But he looks like he mainly plays a defensive midfielder. He's a 28-year-old. So, let's see how long he's been at Manchester United. So, we can see here, he starts his career at the Atletico Madrid B team before getting moved up to the A team. Watford spent £87 million to bring him in before spending three years and he's spent the last five years at Manchester United when they brought him in in 95-96 season for £105 million. Not bad, pretty good. And finally, number three, we've got Yossi Sadis, who is an Israeli 21-year-old playing for Paris Saint-Germain. Let's check him out. So even at 21 years old, He's got 32 caps and 11 goals, and that's coming from the centre of midfield. So that's pretty class. Um, this guy's stats are highly filtered. We can't even see the graph, so we can't fully tell what he's all about. But, you know, with the value being that high, we know he's going to be pretty good. Um, so he's 21 years old. So he plays for Paris, and he looks like he's in his first team. He plays a lot of football. Has he been there his whole career? Let's have a look. So he actually started in Israel with Maccabi Tel Aviv before he was loaned out to Los Angeles Football Club. And then when he came back to Tel Aviv, Paris managed to bring him in on a free. That's a bargain. They brought him in on a free, and now he's worth 82 million. 
That's some good business. Fair enough. Fair play, Paris. Very good. And finally, what I'd like to do in this episode, like we did in the last episode, is check the top three league rankings of the world because Denmark was the number one league in the world 20 years ago. Now, would you look at that? That still applies. Denmark is number one in the world rankings of the league competition leagues. And in second place, we've got the Premier League. And in third, it's the French League, Liga 1 Uber Eats. And then followed that is Bundesliga and Serie A. And Portugal ranks above Spain at the moment. But I'm amazed that Denmark is the most famous world uh, league in the world right now. Nice. So that just about wraps up this episode. And if you've managed to get this far until the end of the video, I'd like to thank you very, very much. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.